Hey, grade eights, welcome to lesson 3.4, Society and the Arts. How do the arts tell us about society? Stick around and let's learn something. Lesson 3.4, what do the arts tell us about a society? Um, oh. <laughs> It tells us a lot, so let's get started. So uh, we're going to take a look today at the society and arts during the Renaissance. We're going to take a look at painting, architecture, sculpture, uh, literature, things like that. And it actually tells us a lot about society. And as I'm going through this, I want you to think about um, society here where we live and what it kind of says about us. Okay, so right now we're living in uh, we're living in Edmonton, and so as we go through this, I want you to try and think, hey, like what is this like here in Edmonton? We're gonna start with with painting, and painting during the Renaissance, the inspiration for painters was coming from the classics. Okay, so again we see that theme, the classics, the Greeks and the Romans. And we're now focusing our attention on to that. And that's where we're getting our inspiration from. Art during the Middle Ages, so right before the Renaissance, 100% totally religious. It was always religious. Everybody was painting a Madonna, okay? Renaissance thinkers during the uh, artists, I should say, um, during this time, who are finding the inspiration from the classics, they are looking at art in a different way. They are looking at it in terms of a natural world. They start experimenting with lights and shadows, textures and patterns and realism. And then there's also that elegance that is going to be there. Now, oftentimes, when you see this, it would make one think that, hey, we aren't painting religious figures anymore. We're not doing religious paintings. We're not painting Bible stories. That is a misconception. They still were very much uh, painting religious themes. They were just applying these, uh, these uh, classical perspectives to those religious themes. Okay, so things were still very religious in nature when it comes to painting. So, but we see all kinds of different styles here. We see now Michelangelo in his paintings. We see Da Vinci and what the work that he's doing. And it's all applying these classical ideas to the religious themed paintings that they were making. What about architecture? Okay, well, guess what? Look at this. They're using the classicals or the classics as well. Looking at classical features and adding it to their work. If the Greek, uh, if Greek architecture wasn't in ruins, you would get confused thinking that maybe the Renaissance buildings are from Greece, except all the Greek uh, architecture lies in ruins. But they were taking a look at those columns and the domes and, and all that kind of stuff from the Greeks and the Romans, and they were applying it to their buildings as well. And what used to be in the Middle Ages, a skilled laborer, like uh, a freeman, if you're taking a look at the chapter one when we're talking about peasants, they were skilled, they could, they could build these types of things, but during the Renaissance, they were looking at this from an artistic point of view. So these architects were now being viewed as artists. An architect, it says here, an architect should be a good writer, a skillful draftsman, versed in geometry and optics, expert at figures, acquainted with history, informed on the principle of nat principles of natural and moral philosophy, somewhat of a musician, not ignorant of the law and of physics, nor of the motions, laws, and relations to each other of the heavenly bodies. Basically, what this excerpt is saying is that an architect needs to be a whole person, mind, body, and soul. That's exactly what humanists were teaching good citizens to be. And architects were being viewed in this way too. You need to be very well versed to be able to create these masterpieces. What about sculptors? Sculptures are next and sculptors did the same thing. They went from somebody with talent and skills to a status of an artist. 
And again, we're sticking with that whole religious theme, but now we are taking a look at it from a classical point of view, and they're adding the natural elements to it, focusing on the human body and on realism as well. And they are starting to sign their work. That's huge, okay? They are signing their work because they want to they want people to know hey that they created this they've got this god-given talent they are well versed and now we are going to be uh, taking credit for this okay and they became international celebrities these are your kardashians these are your okay well, they're not your kardashians because they're nowhere near close but these are your international celebrities were these artists and these sculptors and things like that, like Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Donatello, R Leonardo, I already said that he was Da Vinci, uh, Raphael, and all those Ninja Turtles that we talk about, well, these guys became international celebrities and they would go around and they would be giving lectures and things like that and people would be paying to come and listen to them and to see them. And literature too, literature is no different. Uh, the early Renaissance focused on translating the classics. We want to expose this work to as many people as possible. We are working on translating this into the vernacular, into the language of the people. And not only that, but when it came into their own writing, they started expressing their thoughts and emotions in writing. Now we're starting to see tone. And your language arts teachers will talk often about tone and how you can tell somebody's writing just from reading it because you can hear that person. This is what's coming to us during the Renaissance. And not only is it just the Renaissance, this is now the high Renaissance. This is the peak Renaissance right here. You recognize these individuals? We've got Leonardo. He's in the blue mask. He uses a katana, if you're looking at the Ninja Turtles. Michelangelo, he's in the orange mask, and he uses the nunchucks, if you're looking at the Ninja Turtles. Raphael in red. Um, I'm not sure even how to say that word, so I'm not even going to try. And Donatello, he's in the purple, and he's using a staff. And again, if you take a look at these guys, if I had this picture, the Renaissance Master Ninja Artists, if I had this picture without the uh, masks on, you would just see them as the artists that they are. Now I throw the masks on and you're like, oh yeah, those are the Ninja Turtles. You've seen them, you've heard of them. This is nothing new. That's all we have for this lesson. Head over to your notebook and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.